Hey, I'm Bart Massey. I'm going to be your professor for computer sound and music this uh, spring quarter of 2020. I thought I'd go ahead and record a little video to sort of walk through how this thing's going to go because remote course, it's going to be an adventure of various kinds. And so my plan today is just to take a few minutes and run through the syllabus, talk a little bit about how the online stuff's going to be managed and generally get set up to talk about computer sound and music. So welcome, welcome to my course. Let me pop up the syllabus here. So this is the course syllabus. It's on the course Moodle, which I will talk about in a bit. Um, I'm using Moodle instead of D2L as my learning management system, as my system for managing assignments and grades and lecture notes and that kind of thing. It's a system that I run myself, so I have some control over it, and it's a system that I think works better than D2L for me. So that'll be one of the things you'll deal with. But anyway, on there is the syllabus, and you know you can see all the standard information that you would expect to see on a course syllabus. Uh, our official meeting time, Monday and Wednesday from 2 to 3.50, so that's a thing. This disclaimer is important. This is only the second time I will have ever taught computer sound and music, and so this is a bit of an experimental course. I'm going to be trying to figure out what works, what doesn't, and things may change as they go. Nothing here is set in stone, so that's important. I'll come back to the description in a little bit, but the short version is we're going to play with computers and software and sound and music, just like you'd think we would in a course with this title. and try to understand a little of what's going on. We'll write a whole lot of software because that's the way you learn this sort of thing. Um, you need to know some stuff. Mostly you need to be able to program really, really super successfully. Uh, if you're not comfortable programming in some reasonable modern programming language, and by comfortable I mean a few hundred lines of code does not sound like that big a deal to you, that you know is simple and clean and works, then you should be concerned because this class is sort of at that level. We'll I'll expect you to be able to do that. Um, the thing I wanted to foc on for, focus on first is that this is a remote course. Uh, the This is something we haven't tried before. Uh, I, the last time I tried this, it was in a classroom in the theater over near the computer science building. And that was a fantastic venue. It meant that we had nice sound in the room. It meant that there was plenty of space for everybody to spread out. It had a stage, which is a great venue for doing music stuff. So this time the venue is going to be on computers. It's all going to be online. And that will be a different thing. I don't think there's anything about it that should be particularly breaking. I think that it's going to be absolutely straightforward to translate the course to a remote setting. But here we are. There will be challenges, and I would ask you to have some patience with me, and I will have patience with you as we try to figure out how to make all of this work. So that's an important thing to say. Uh, first of all, because it's a remote course, and because of the nature of this particular remote course, you really are going to need to have good internet access, uh, not just during the time when you're attending the synchronous lecture, which I'll talk about in a bit, but all the time, really. And that's tough, I know, for some of you. The good news is that various internet providers are offering free installation and free service for the duration of this crisis to people who can't afford it. Um, and so there should be some way that you can go ahead and arrange that. You will also need to have a computer at home that you can program to use for audio. That's just going to be a requirement. We don't have any way. Normally, I would say just log in to the, remotely to the computer science lab machines, but unfortunately, that just doesn't really work for audio. You really need to have a computer at home that you can program in some reasonable way. It could be a Windows box, a Mac box, a Linux box. You need to have, that computer needs to have a microphone of some kind, either a built-in laptop microphone or an input jack with a microphone or whatever. Uh, 
the computer needs to have a sound output device of some kind, speaker or headphones or something like that. And so if you have something that can hear audio, something that can produce audio, and you can program both those things, then you are set for this course. That should be what you need. If you have troubles with any of this, please contact me sooner rather than later. We can try to figure out what we can do to make this possible for you. That's just the nature of remote stuff. So lectures, uh, normally I would do four hours of lecture a week and it really would go pretty much four hours every week because there's more in this course than we could possibly cover in the time we have. Remote two hour lectures work even less well than in-person two hour lectures. And so we're going to try it a way that I tried the last couple of quarters last lectures last quarter that seemed to work pretty well, which is that I'll provide about two hours a week of video content that I pre-record and that I'll expect you to watch ideally before coming to class. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll be there during the scheduled meeting times to give lectures, to give demonstrations, to discuss with all y'all on video. And by video, in this case, I mean the Zoom meeting tool, Portland State is a subscriber of Zoom, and so we will be Zooming. And if you go to pdx.zoom.us, you will find that you can set up with your PSU email, with your PSU account, to participate in that. That's an important thing, by the way, for this offering, which is remote. Uh, you'll be using your .pdx.edu you know, your pdx.edu email address for everything. You'll, you, you, the, I can't let outside addresses in, and that's for security reasons, unfortunately. There's been a bunch of Zoom bombing. There's been a bunch of people, you know, disrupting things, which is about as reprehensible as anything a person could do at a time of crisis. But there you are, they're doing it. And so I really need you to authenticate through PSU and participate through PSU through your pdx.edu email account. So that's a thing. Whatever. It is that you're listed on in banner uh, is probably fine. So get set up with Zoom, get your Zoom client set up if you want to, which isn't so bad. Zoom is available for all the platforms, Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, iOS. So you should be able to be able to set that up. And on two o'clock on Mondays and two o'clock on Wednesdays, I will send you in advance of that a URL, a Zoom URL that you can use to log in. We'll all meet together. And I would really, really encourage you strongly to attend those lectures. If for some reason you can't, either regularly or just as a one-off, I will try to record the lectures and I will try to make those recordings available so that you have access to it later. Uh, it's not the same as being there. And I'd really strongly to encourage you to be there if it, you at all can. Uh, so I'll, the lectures that I pre-record, I'll post both to YouTube. I have a YouTube channel and I will send you a link for that, but it's not too hard to find either if you look around on YouTube and I will be posting things on there. And also I will be posting the same things to PSU's Media Space, which is their little tool for publishing lecture content. So things will be available both those places. Um, the lecture time, the synchronous lecture time will be focused, like I say, on demonstrations of things. I'll try to put together little programming demos. We'll do some live programming, that kind of stuff. And on discussion, we'll try to actually use Zoom's chat features a little bit to try to figure out, answer questions, go off on topics that I hadn't planned to go off on. So that's the plan there. Um, so yeah, email. Uh, I gonna try to stay away from email as much as possible because it's really clunky to use for this many people. We have over 40 people in this class, but you are required to be able to use your official pdx.edu email address. I will expect to be able to email things there and for them to get to you. So you need to do whatever you need to do to make sure that's gonna work. Um, like I say, lectures by Zoom. I will also have a, a Slack which is I've already set up and I'll get you the invite URL for that very shortly. That Slack is where we will do discussions. So if you haven't used Slack before, it's a perfectly reasonable business oriented chat board discussion tool. So you can get onto Slack and 
chat about whatever it is that you're interested in. This will be a chance to ask questions, both of myself, our assistant, and the stu other students in the class. It'll be a chance to show off things you've done and a way to reach me if you need to reach me. Uh, that's probably the easiest way is to message me on Slack, either in the general channel or directly. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Um, this is a project course. I would expect once we get rolling to spend about eight hours a week or more on this course. It's not a light pull. Uh, so expect to be trying to figure out some hard stuff a lot of the time. I am perfectly cool with you doing stuff together. That is fantastic. Uh, use your, the course Slack to make discussions, create your own online chat rooms or study groups to discuss stuff, understand the approaches, understand the problem, that's fantastic. But when it goes to actually writing stuff up, programming stuff, actually producing solutions, when I ask for individual work, you have to do your own work. You can't copy anyone else's. Plagiarism is bad. I'll talk more about that in a bit. So there'll be a bunch of homework, as much as I can manage to get together and grade because I think it's a really good way, programming assignments are a really good way to learn the material that we have here. I don't have any interest in late stuff because my poor V-leaguer grader has to deal with things and having stuff come in after they're done is no fun for them. So really I don't st take stuff late. Uh, you can submit the homework as many times as you like. The last assignment received before grading starts is the one that will be considered for a grade. So some, submit something before the deadline, even if it's only a thing with your name on it, so that we can understand that you're actually paying attention and planning to do the assignment. Once the assignment's grading starts, then we won't take anything you receive after that. So yeah. Um, a big part of the course grade is a course project. That will be about 60% of, 40% of your course grade, homework being the other 60. The project can be an individual project or you may choose to group up with another, you know, one to three people to make two to four person groups. That's fine too. And I'll talk more about that once the course gets going, but you should start now thinking about what computers and sound related thing or computers and music related thing it is that you're interested in. We can talk and sometime very soon, sooner than you think, we'll be actually trying to figure out what you're gonna do for that. Um, yeah, the there's no planned exams. I don't know how I would do that remotely anyway, but I generally don't anyhow, so there's no planned exams. There may be quizzes that are gonna be mostly sort of like a homework assignment assigned from time to time. I don't know. I, I'm still trying to work out whether that's something I want to do. If you get a zero on any one assignment, I, for whatever reason, that will result in a zero for the course. So you really need to turn in something for every assignment. That's super important. I guess we should have the plagiarism talk several times. Look, this is a homework and project-based course. People are doing different things a lot of the time. A lot of the solutions that I'm seeing for homeworks are things that are in tutorials and that kind of stuff. I try to make it as unique as I can, but it's always going to be out there. The project, you know, it's really tempting to plagiarize your project, especially when you get behind. If you use someone else's code or ideas or text or whatever without acknowledging it, and I find out about it, I will give you a zero on the assignment or project, which will result in a zero grade in the course, and then I will forward that information to the university people who handle such things, so you will get a student co conduct code violation. You'll have to deal with that. Don't. Please, please don't. If you have any doubts about whether what you're doing is legitimate, please talk to me and I can help you clear it up. I'm not inclined to say no to any reasonable thing if I know what it is, and then you'll have it that I know what it is. And if you're tempted, please understand that, you know, the worst that can happen if you don't plagiarize is that you get a zero in the course. The worst that can happen if you do plagiarize is that plus a whole bunch of other bad stuff. Plus you'll hurt me at my feelings and make me cry. And I know you don't want to make hurt my feelings and make me cry. So please don't do that. 
So, um, I should emphasize, especially in this course, that we are committed, like KSU is always committed, to helping you if you have a disability as recognized by the PSU Disability Resource Center. Obviously, most kinds of disabilities are not going to be too much in a remote situation. The kinds that are going to be the most problematic are uh, sound or audio related things. If you have trouble hearing, if that's a thing, this course is going to be more challenging for you. There's just no way around it, but I will do everything I can to make it work for you. You need to make sure that your hearing disability is documented by the DRC and you need to let me know as soon as possible, don't wait for the DRC to do it, that that's a thing so we can try to figure out how to make this work. Uh, the obviously discrimination, harassment, that sort of thing. I have no, I have no tolerance for that. It needs to not happen. And if you're experiencing that, well, there's a lot of information at the bottom of the syllabus. One thing you should know is that I, like all faculty and instructors, am a mandatory reporter for this kind of thing, which means that you can't tell me this kind of thing in confidence. I have to report it to my supervisor or to the, um, Disability Resource Center, so, uh, you know, please be aware of that, but I will do everything I can, you know, to keep you safe. There's, like I say, there's good information in the syllabus. So that's most of that. Um, let me, before I close out today, talk a little bit with you about what it looks like here in this remote quarter. Look, first of all, I know a lot of you are in tough situations. I have every sympathy for this time when things are very, very difficult to take classes. And I'm really grateful that you're considering or planning at least to be in my class and to take my stuff. I absolutely want to do everything I can to support you. I will be there for you as much as I can. I will make all the allowances I can figure out how to reasonably make. Uh, so please, please, please be safe out there understand that I do care, try to participate. Hopefully this will be a safe, supportive community where you can do something that's actually fun. I love playing with this stuff. That's why I decided to do this class. And I did it last time and couldn't have been happier with how it came out. I was very excited to see all the cool sound things that people did and built. And I was very excited to show off a few sound things that I didn't build myself. So I think this is gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be a good break for you. Thanks very much. I'm going to cut it short and split talking about the rest of the syllabus and the course stuff till a later time. Uh, welcome. Welcome to PSU 410P510 Computer Sound and Music. We're happy to have you here.